And, you know, there, I don't know if you feel this way, but there are so many things to focus on and think about um, in Mary Kay. First of all, the skills of the business, right? Booking appointments, and then once you've got them booked, then it's time to coach them, and then it's time to hold them, and then it's time to um, do three things at every party, sell sets, and book follow-ups, and find new prospects, and then it's time to follow up with your customers two days later, and then you want to, right? I mean, there's a lot of things to do in the skills. And then I think about, there's a lot of contests, too. You know, there's Star Consultant, and then, oh my goodness, we have the um, challenge right now with the new starter kit, and you can win the little insert when you have... I mean, it just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? And I know it can be overwhelming at times, too, when we think about all of the contests and all the things that are going on. So I just want you to take a deep breath tonight, and all the things that we just talked about, we're just going to focus on one part of the business that really will take you everywhere. And any time that you are frustrated with your business or you're uncertain about your business, there are two things that will fix it. And the first is booking a party, and the second is getting a new team member. Because seeing the business through a new team member's eyes, how many of you remember, I know we have some newer consultants in here, but how many of you remember the very first day you started and all the excitement and the hope and um, just every emotion that was going through you? Well, when you start to build a team, you get to experience that again and again and again through their eyes. And you can't help but be excited as you're building your team. So I'm going to give you, um, and I had shared some of this training before and had an acronym that at the time meant something different but I think is appropriate now. Um, at the time when I first developed some of this training, it was for those that wanted to go to Atlanta for our leadership conference that year, and, um, this past year, and we called them Brave Babes because it was in Atlanta, for Atlanta Braves. Uh, but I think the acronym BRAVE is always appropriate in our business. So I'm gonna give you that acronym tonight, and um, we're gonna go through B, R, A, B, and E. And B, when it comes to team building, this is all about recruiting and team building, um, is that we have to break it down into the numbers. We have to break it down into the numbers. And so many of you have heard this statement before, that Mary Kay is mathematical. It's not magical, right? Now, I will say, there is one other M, though. It is mathematical, not magical, but there's something called momentum. And momentum does trump the numbers. So when you see Tina and what's going on in her business right now, her numbers are skewed. But that's because she has momentum. And you can, you're all going to, at one point in your business, ride a momentum wave. And nothing goes wrong, and everybody says yes, and that is awesome. But just know that that the majority of the time we're going to be working with the numbers as we strive to get into that momentum grew. So I want to tell you two stories, well actually one story, and then I'm going to give you an example. And some of you may have seen my example before, but the first story, um, so that you truly believe that this is a math business, comes from my very first year in Mary Kay. And I didn't bring my um, visual with me, so you'll just have to trust me. But my very first year in Mary Kay, there was a contest called the Century Club. And the idea was to add 100 new skincare customers in the year from July 1st through June 30th. And it didn't matter how many you got in one week or one month, but throughout the whole year, 100 people, different people, to buy a skincare set. So I have my little tracking sheet um, next to my desk, and for the whole year, I'd start to mark down as I would have new skincare customers, and throughout that year, it started to move up in my business and earn a free car and even become a director towards the end of that year. Well, it was the last day of the Century Club, and I think I needed two or three more skincare customers, so I was dialing for dollars and getting those last few people offering in the world, and finished those last few skincare sets just a couple, you know, an hour or so before the mail run went. So I took my sheets of paper that were a year's worth, there was four of them, 25 on each page, um, the name, the address, the, what they bought, the date, everything about that person, and I shoved them in an envelope, and I mailed them off to Mary Kay. There was recognition at seminar. Well, a week or two later, a friend of mine called, and she said, oh, did you get your congratulations Century Club letter in the mail? I said, no, I haven't gotten it. I wonder what happened. So I thought, well, let me just call Mary Kay. I'm a little bit recognition-oriented. So I thought, let me just call Mary Kay. I know seminar's not for a few more weeks, but I'm going to call. And they said they did not have a record of ever receiving my Century Club. Oh, I was crushed. It was a year-long contest, and I was 
so disappointed. And I just sat there and I said, well, is there anything I can do? I promise you I did it. And the woman said, well, okay, if you will fax me your Century Club um, tracking sheets for the whole year, if you'll track, uh, fax that to me before the end of the day, then I'll go ahead and do it. I said, okay. I got off the phone knowing that I had mailed the originals to Mary Kay week or so before. Well, I had just hired my first assistant. She was a college girl, and she worked a couple hours a week, and I said, stop what you're doing. We have to recreate these, this list. So we went through weekly accomplishment sheets and sales, sales tickets and you name it. And this was really before all the computer stuff that we had. So we were manually going through everything and writing down and re-recording all these records. And we got to 75, and we were stuck. I had 75 customers, and I mean, for 15, 20 minutes, we're looking through everything, and she's looking at me. And I'm looking at her, I promise I did it. And we can't find 24 more skincare customers. And all of a sudden, it hit me. The month before I become a sales director, so the customer list had become my unit list and the 25 missing skincare customers were now consultants in my brand new unit. And that just hit me and I sat there and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Mary Kay, we say that one out of four say yes. 25 out of, I still have chills thinking about it, I have the sheets, 25 out of 100 throughout the year had said yes. But now there was a season, y'all, where weeks would go by and I'd get lots and lots and lots of no's. But you know, it really didn't matter at that point. At the end of the year, I was able to step back and look at the big picture and say, oh my goodness, one out of four throughout the whole year. So sometimes we need to think about the numbers. Sometimes we need to step back and say, you know what? I have been looking at where the numbers are this week, and I need to step back and see where they've been this month or these last couple of months. And lastly, some of us just need more numbers. That's the difference. You know, if I had seen, if I had had 20 new customers that year, then I'd have five new recruits, which would be great. But it took 100 to get 25 new to become a director. So I wanted to share that story with you to see how real it is. And the girls that have been in my new consultant class know my story about the power start. I mean, I talk about the numbers. Not that what we do is numbers based, but we have to acknowledge that we can take the emotion out of it and not wonder why she's moving up and I'm not and just strictly go by the numbers. So the other thing I want to show you is this deck of cards. And this is really interesting. <clears throat> Have y'all ever seen this exercise before? And you can always take a deck of cards, um, do this very exercise, and you can put it up on a poster, every single card. See, in the deck of cards, we have face cards and we have number cards. And if we want to, we add in the jokers to this pack of cards, and we start to um, pretend, like every card we flip over is the person that we've interviewed, then you're going to see, it's really kind of cool, you're going to see that all it takes, sure, you going to shuffle them for me? Okay. <coughs> all right, so how many cards do we have in the deck of cards? 52 plus the jokers, we have 54. Okay, so one out of four are going to say yes, right? So in a deck of 54, if one out of four says yes, how many new recruits are we going to have? 12. 12 new recruits. So this, um, and the, it used to work great when we only needed 12 recruits for a car. Now we need 14. But you all still get the idea. If you want a car team, you're going to do it like a deck of cards. Card. All right, car, car team. Just come up here and do it for me, Lindsay. <coughs> Kaz. <laughs> Thanks, T. Kaz. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to do a quick little example, and you can just turn them over and throw them on the floor. It really doesn't matter. Okay, what's the first one? Okay, that's a no. I'll hold all the no's. So we have a no. Yes. We have a yes. Okay. So see, all of a sudden, if we're a new consultant, we go, oh my gosh, this is easy. I talked to one, and the next person says yes. But let's keep going. Okay? So we have a yes. Let's see. Oh, we have another no. We have another yes. Okay, so see, we're still thinking it's super easy. We have another no, another no, that's two no's in a row, three no's in a row, four no's in a row. Now we want to quit because we've had five no's in a row, six no's in a row. Forget it. Seven no's in a row. Oh, well, no, this is a, no, this is a face, right? Yeah, seven no's. Okay, so now we have a yes. And keep, we can do it one more time. Let's keep going. Okay, we have another no, one no, two no's, three no's. Four no's, we get caught up in the no's. Five no's again, right? Six no's, we start to say forget it. Seven no's, 
eight no's, now we're really depressed. Yes. But see, that one more, now we have another new recruit. And if we go through the whole deck, we'll see that it plays out. That we have to talk to four or three to get a new team member. But sometimes we get caught in the middle of the no's or the number cards, and that's when we quit. And you know what happens? I'll tell you what happens. One of the red jackets or one of the directors comes along and interviews, you know, you quit. And she interviews that next person that was your yes, and that's her yes. That happens all the time with customers and team members. You're getting them all primed for us, and we don't give up, so we come along and interview, and now she's our team member. You can't quit before the yes. I also tell my consultants, you, you can always quit right after you've booked a party or had a new recruit. That's fine. Nobody's going to quit after they booked a new party. Or but you can't, you can't quit when something just canceled or someone said no. Because I'm going to go get your yes. And you're going to miss your yes. So that's the difference between the purple suits and the red jackets, is that we've just been able to go through a few more notes. That's the only difference. Okay? Now, I will say that there's two ways to go through these cards, and that's one at a time, and that takes a long time, right? And some of those notes can start to sting more. Or you can just do parties, and you have four or five at a time, and you get to flip over four or five cards. Right? So at the party, you might have four no's, but you have a yes. Or you might have three no's, but you have a yes. So to me, that's the fastest way to work through the numbers is to do it through the parties. <clears throat> okay, the last thing I want to share about B is um, if, you, if you have been in Mary Kay a little bit, it is good to go back and track your numbers. And it usually is either one of two things. It's a skill level. And if you're doing your interviews on your own, have your uh, director or recruiter listen, or you listen to one of hers. And she'll be able to see if maybe there's just something that can tweak, that you can help with that skill. And I, I had a consultant, um, actually a, a new director um, one time, who did a great, great, great interview. Amazing. I mean, I was like ready to sign up. And then she didn't ask for the decision. And she's like, well, thanks so much. And she got off the phone, and I was like, want to jump through the phone and say, at least find out if they're a yes or a no. So that's how I knew that her skill of closing it was meaning that she had to talk to a lot more people for that one brave person to say, oh, can you recruit me? So sometimes it's a skill level. And then sometimes we do, our numbers might be skewed if we're not talking to quality women. So, OK. Um, oh, the last thing about that, I do want to say, I've mentioned this before sometimes too, our job is for them to say yes to hear about the opportunity, not to say yes to the opportunity. That's their job. Our job is just to get them to say yes to hear about it so we can flip some cards. Their job is to say yes to the opportunity. Okay, um, R stands for <clears throat> reasons why. Reasons why. And really what that means is we have to know our own reason why we're passionate about the business and what, what we want out of it. There have been seasons where I have, I have lost my enthusiasm and my passion. I'm sure y'all could not ever imagine that's happened. But it has. And I found that my recruiting was not very good at that time because my belief and my reason wasn't strong. But when there's been a season when I remember, you know, before each baby, I knew I needed to hustle. I was getting ready to just, you know, nest with the baby for a long time. I needed to hustle. My reason was really, really strong. And it just seemed like fish were jumping in the boat because my own reason was very clear. So I say that because um, if there have been a time when my sales haven't been very high, I know I haven't really been sincere when I'm sharing with a woman how much she can make extra with her sales. And I've known that if I just go out that week and have a really great week in sales too, then I'll be able to recruit, her, recruit again with all sincerity. So if there's an area in your business that you don't feel great in right now, chances are that's reflecting and, and, and overflowing into your team building too. But the good news is you can change that. Um, so not only do we need to know our reason, but we need to know their reason too. And that comes with asking questions. Asking questions, asking questions, asking questions, and finding the common ground. And y'all heard me share last week about the five needs, the five core needs when I was talking to the guests. And that is one of the best ways to know um, her reason why, is to find out what her need is, and then show her how Mary Kay can fill it. Um, a, a stands for analyze. Not a lot, though. Just a little. Just a little analyzation. Um, for those of you, and I know I'm, I'm 
mostly speaking to seasoned consultants in here, I always go back to a time when it was working. You know, team building hasn't been super strong right now for whatever reason. I think back to a time when I did have momentum. I think what was going on? What was working right? And chances are I stopped doing that. I don't know why. I was sharing with a consultant. When, when I was a new consultant, every face that I saw that week, I invited to be my guest that Monday night. I know it's a lot. Well, she just saw me this week, and she, but that's a good thing. And I found that closer to the product and closer to me, the more likely she was to say yes. And when I was layering her quickly, then I was building quickly. So if you saw me this week, I would say, guess what? You get a special VIP invitation because you saw me this week to come and be pampered and be my face model on Monday night. And especially if she was my hostess, I would say, I'm going to get some recognition because of what you did. And I want you there to, um, to celebrate you as a VIP hostess because you'll get to see me stand up for the sales. So every person that I saw that week, I realized as I was analyzing that I wasn't, I stopped doing that for some reason. I don't know why. So getting back into that. So if you've had a season where it's been going great, <clears throat> then get back to that. Um, okay, I'm going to skip over that. Um, the next thing is the victory begins in the mind. And boy, this is a mental game, isn't it? Y'all feel like that? It is a mental, mental game, a mental business. The new consultants are learning about attitude tonight. The longer you've been in Mary Kay, it just kind of starts to come naturally to us. <clears throat> but I remember as a new consultant, attitude was a decision every single day. I used to wake up and turn the news on. Boy, that did not help my attitude every single morning. I was already depressed and overwhelmed and sad by the time I got in my car to drive to work. So attitude is, is a decision. And attitude and victory of team building is also a decision too. <clears throat> and some of the things that I love are affirmations. <clears throat> and I would say things um, like, you know, I'm a master team builder, and I was not a good recruiter to start. I was a really lousy recruiter. So I would say, you know, um, I'm a master team builder. Um, women that are confident and successful are drawn to me in my business because I felt intimidated by those women. So I would make an affirmation about how I felt, and I would just pretend that I was Kate, frankly. Um, I really would. I, I especially love doing things on the phone because I just pretend I was her. <laughs> I'm like, she wouldn't be scared. So I'm like, so I'm just going to be her. And I would. And I'd say her same words and everything else. Um, the people that you're around. As a newer consultant, I remember going to a meeting and there was a girl that I just kind of linked up with. And I started to realize that she didn't have a good attitude and she wasn't going place, to places that I wanted to go. And so I realized I had to literally move sides. And it wasn't on one side of the meeting or the other. But I had to move sides and be around people that also had a positive, excited attitude about building their teams and moving forward. Visual, visualization, and Dee already mentioned, or somebody already mentioned, who mentioned? Kate said to cut the face out. Oh, yeah, Tina. Kate, uh, your national always said to cut the face out of whatever goal is and put your face there to see yourself in that position. So to see yourself there first. Um, let's see. Oh, I love this one. Um, this, have you all heard this Alice in Wonderland quote? <clears throat> she says, um, there's no use in trying. One can't believe in possible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. Alice is talking to the queen. And the queen says, when I was younger, I always did it for half a day. Why, sometimes I believed in as many as six impossible things before breakfast. And I love that because we're taught to make a six most important list, right? And sometimes they do feel impossible to do. But the queen says, oh, I just believed them before breakfast. Um, and then E stands for expectations. Expectations. And there's a couple of thoughts that I have on that. The first is, do you go to every team building appointment or get on the phone or talk to somebody expecting them to say yes? You know, I heard someone say that she's going to a signing. She's not going to an interview or whatever you call it, a market. She's going to a signing. Are you surprised when someone says no? Or are you expecting it? It's the same kind of thing at a skincare party. Are you expecting them to buy a miracle set? Or are you surprised if they buy a miracle set? Those that expect it, I'm sure Dee went in to her appointment. Why wouldn't everybody expect it to, um, to have, a, have a miracle set, right? So I realized that that's been one of the blessings of a longevity in Mary Kay, is that I have seen it all. 
and maybe haven't reached it all yet, and I hadn't for many years, but I had seen other people do it. And so I expected every person that I talked to to say yes. I expected it. And if they didn't, I was surprised. And that's when really the team building started to take off, was my expectations. But I will say one other thing on expectations, is that how you get them is how you keep them. How you get them is how you keep them. And we really don't want to recruit just for recruiting's sake, right? We want to recruit women that we want to work with, that are hard workers, that are women of integrity, that call us back. You know, if you're dealing with a woman that you can't get to call you back before you recruit her, she is not going to call you back after you recruit her. It's like dating and marriage, right? Things don't get better <laughs> on the, uh, you know, okay. Anyways, y'all get the idea though, right? You know, you know when, when you've heard girls say, oh, well, he'll change, and once we get married, he'll change. No, it doesn't. So it's the same thing. If you're having a hard time relating to her, connecting to her, communicating with her before, don't recruit her because it's just going to get worse. Also, expectations too. I want to share a couple things with you. And then we're going to wrap up and, and, um, and we are going to let you role play a few things here tonight too. Um, but when it comes to expectations, sometimes we're so desperate for a team member that we do things like this. Um, she says, now do I have to go to those meetings? And you go, oh no, oh no, 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 no. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. You don't have to go to the meetings. They don't take attendance. You don't have to be there. It's not a big deal. I mean, if you can't make it, totally understand because we were desperate, we want her, we want her, we want her. And then guess what happens? She signs her agreement and we say, okay, so Monday night's the meeting, you're gonna wanna wear a skirt, and it's $6, dollars you are gonna come, and all of a sudden she's like, wait a minute, you said no meeting, and then all of a sudden the director can't get her on the phone, and now we lost her. That makes sense? Okay, or sometimes she says, well, do I need to have, do I need to do those parties? And you go, oh, oh no, 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 no. I mean, you could do everything online if you want to, just hand out a few books, you don't have to do, no, you don't have to do those parties. I mean, if you want to, but you don't have to. And then she comes to training, maybe, right? And we say, if you want to make money, you're going to do parties, and you're going to do 30 faces in 30 days. And all of a sudden, she doesn't come back to the next meeting, right? Or, you know, the list could go on and on. Do I have to have inventory? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And then you never go on target for your car because every single person only comes in with the smallest little order because you told them they don't have to order anything. And I'll tell you, as a director, that makes our job really hard. <laughs> When you tell them up front all the things they don't have to do, and then we do a, a welcome call, and we tell them all the things that will help them be successful, and then all of a sudden they don't know who to believe. Did they believe their friend who told them they don't have to do anything? Or did they believe their director who's trying to help them get things started? So we don't have to apologize for anything that we do in Mary Kay. In fact, here's a great way to answer her. She says, do I have to go to those meetings? You go, no. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. I will say, though, based on what you told me about your goal of quitting your job, you're probably going to want some training. And I would recommend that you come to the most fabulous, amazing training. And, you know, come for a couple of months. And if you decide you don't need it anymore, then that's fine. But based on what you told me about your goals, I would highly recommend that you come. If she says, well, do I have to do those parties? You go, well, of course not. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to. But based on what you told me just a few minutes ago about how you'd really like to you know, do this with your income, I would say that's going to be the best bang for your buck, the smartest way to build your business. See what I mean? So she says, do I have to? No. Based on what you told me, I would suggest, okay? Sometimes they're just testing the waters. They don't even really mean it um, when they ask those questions. They're wanting to know the boundaries. Does that make sense to everybody? So just remember expectations. How we approach them at the beginning is how they're going to be. And sometimes we get lucky, right? And they are just a superstar. It doesn't matter what we said or what we did. She is in it to win it, and she's going to go straight to the top, with or without our help <laughs> or our hindrance, and that is a blessing, too. So I want you to know, I don't want anyone to be sitting here feeling awful. I have apologized to many a consultant in my day, especially my new one, said, sorry, I messed up a lot. <laughs> and she says, it's okay. Uh, they are still with us. So those are just some team building tips for you. I know that they're not exactly how to, um, uh, and I might have Robin and Myra come and help with it, and, and, and uh, uh, help, help with a, just a little bit of some technique and some words to say too, on either, or maybe how to get an interview. 
because we talked about you don't have to get them to say yes, but you just have to get them to say yes to hear. Um, so maybe just a few words on how you would get an interview. Um, I know I'm kind of throwing this out there at you, but they can handle it. And then I'd like to do a little bit of role play. And let's do a little bit of role play until about 8.15. You can stick around and do some more. And if you have some guests, great. Or then you're free to go, too. So I'm going to turn it over to Robin. She's ready. And we're going to do a little role play tonight. Okay. So I'm going to go recruit all the guests. That's where I'm going. <laughs> go, Kelly. <laughs> See, my expectation. So as you are wanting to book your um, sharing appointment, or get them to listen, Either over their phone or in the person. You want to. You want to. Um, you want to say. Is there any reason? So always say. My director has me in a challenge, and um, that always works. Throw it on us. And so um, you can say, um, "Would you be willing to help me out with my challenge by listening to a little bit of marketing information?" And so, sure, why not? It's only. It's only you know a few minutes. So um, that that would be one way if you're wanting. The actual wording, it was, would you be willing to listen to a little bit of marketing for a few minutes? Ah, the coach bag. Oh, I was like, you're looking to see if you can model that for me, but I don't see it. Um, anyway, yes, and um, they can be put into the coach bag drawing. When are we doing that drawing? March 30th. March the 30th at Career Conference. Okay, so March the 30th at Career Conference, we're doing the drawing, coach bag. And maybe if anybody has any script that's been working for them, too, to get people to listen, you could share that. Do you know, I, well, sometimes I, I, I tell them, they'll listen for a few minutes, I'll get my half price item. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you hadn't lost anything, she's, she's gained some knowledge and um, probably even some respect for our company. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think for me, what, what helps a lot of times is I have talked to her and asked questions and listened throughout the appointment. I've listened to buzzwords that maybe she's put out there about how she doesn't like what she's doing, how she'd love to stay home with her children, or whatever, you know, because the more they talk and the more you listen, the more you'll find out whether or not this is something that would fit into her life or not. Um, and in the beginning, you all remember the four-point recruiting plan you know, who he, who's coming, you know, just like the little owl, who, 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 you know, who's coming that you think would be good doing what, what I do, you know, I think you'd be great, you know, that kind of thing. And so you planted the seed right from the very beginning, and of course, you know, if you have done your homework, and you have asked the questions, and you've done the appropriate amount of listening, then you probably have already pre-qualified her to be a part of your team. Now keep in mind that everyone that is in front of you was not meant to be in Mary Kay. They were meant to be a customer. However, we want them to hear the information because they may lead you to your next superstar. You're looking for sales directors, ladies, not just potential team members. You're looking for your next sales director. Isn't that something? Even as, even as a seasoned consultant, red jacket or whatever, you're looking for your next sales director. Could you not totally have your, like, your panties on fire if you recruited somebody who literally came up and was running right along with you? Recruiting as much as you are, holding as many parties as you're holding? Would that just not like totally flip your skirt up? Seriously. I mean, can you dig it? Right? I mean, well, that's what I mean. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for your next sales director. So what has worked for us in, um, in, in our unit, in our team, is, you know, just that. You've done your homework in the beginning. You know, you've done the, the appointment and you've listened to her. You know, you've built that relationship and rapport with her. You've asked the right questions. So now, you say, you know what? You probably don't think I'm crazy. But have you ever thought about doing something like this? I think you'd be great. And you remember when you were telling me how you would love to be home with your kids more? <laughs> right? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Y'all that nod and smile and works the whole time because it's a positive affirmation. It's warm. It's inviting, you know. And you, you, you're basically just, that's the wrong word. You're basically just giving her back what she's already giving you, you know. Yeah, you remember how you were telling me how your car was breaking down a lot? Right? <laughs> you remember how you were telling me how you would love to be home when your husband gets home sometimes instead of passing each other in the night? You remember how you were telling me?
tell me how you'd like to be home with that new baby that's on the way? Right? I think you'd be great doing what I do. Have you ever thought about doing something like this? And usually, what do they say? Oh, girl, no, me? I'm not the sales type. Really? You know what? That's great. And you just go right from there. <coughs> well, I've probably done the recruiting thing before. But my suggestion and my tip to you would be do your homework during the appointment. You've got a, you've got a captive audience, right? Ask her the questions because you want to know is she going to be a great customer or your next director? And go ahead and know that up front, because if you have recruited a lady who was meant to be your best customer, guess what you've done? You cut yourself off at the knees. Because if everyone was selling it, there'd be no one to buy it, right? So you want great customers just like you want great team members. So if you've pre-qualified her throughout that entire appointment, you'll know. You'll know. Just like the person who, who found you knew. You know? So, I mean... You want those ladies who are ready to rock and roll, and you, you want the ladies who are, how, how did they say it early, earlier? You want the lady who is mentally stable. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, the, the ones who are in one spot, but they're ready for the next one. Because let's face it, y'all, some ladies are where they are because they have chosen to be there. You know, and all the pink goals and pink dreams you can sell is not going to drag them kicking and screaming, and even if their hair's on fire out of that situation, they are where they are because they were choosing to be there. Well, guess what? Let her be a customer. It's okay. You know, just let her keep paying full price. You know? <laughs> I mean, because they're either going to be a great consultant or they're going to be a great customer. But you just let her know, you know what, I, I think you'd be great doing what I do. Who do you know that would be great doing what I do? You know, and then let her tell you. And see, you know what, I think you'd be great. If that's the truth. Right? And probably right around the mask, or I say mask now because I just did a botanical uh, <laughs> appointment today. But right around that time when you got, you, by then you know, <laughs> you know, you've kind of seen how it goes. A anybody, anybody have any questions about that? Does that make sense to you? You know, just try really hard to do half as much talking as you do listening. She will tell you everything that you need to know about whether or not she's going to be your next sales director or a really good customer. If you better, she'll tell you. She'll tell you. How about you, Britt? I don't really how to follow that. Everybody pretty much said what I was going to say. Um, one thing that they didn't really cover, when you're on the phone with somebody and you're talking to them and you have a facial schedule and you're working on trying to turn it into a party, and I noticed that will work, is those little words, but what most women do is invite, you know, three or four friends over. Most women want to do what most women do. So if you use those little words, they're going to want to be like, you know, their friend Susie down the street that had ten people over for her house, um, for her party, instead of, you know, one or two girlfriends. So that works really good. Um, just the little words. And that's what I do for interviews and things like that to get them to help me out to listen to a phone call or come to a meeting or... Is there any reason why not? Is there any reason why you can't help me out? I'm in this contest, this challenge. Like I said, throw it back on us and we'll give you some prize for it. <laughs> but is there any reason why you can't help me? Is there any reason why you can't come to my meeting with me on Monday night? Um, with customers, if you really think that they're, they would be great at this and you've tried the opportunity just one-on-one -on -one with them, bring them to a meeting because they're going to come and they're going to see everybody and see really, you know, the different levels and what the career can do for you. Um, I've recruited so many people that way just by bringing them and letting them see the different levels. Like, oh my gosh, you know, she started five months ago and she's in a car or, you know, things like that.